Welcome to Noir Alley, my little tent show on the TCM Midway. I'm your sideshow spieler, Eddie Muller. Carney lingo is entirely appropriate for today's movie. It's Flamingo Road, a Warner Brothers release from 1949. Joan Crawford stars as a carnival dancer who shakes and shimmies her way through the sordid messes made by crooked cops and political fixers, played by Zachary Scott, Sidney Greenstreet, and David Bryan. Over the years, many pundits have complained that Crawford was terribly miscast, insisting that at 45, she was far too old for the part. This goes to show you that not many of these pundits have seen a carnival coot show. Some of the dancers are old enough to be Joan Crawford's mother. Flamingo Road came in the middle of Crawford's amazing run of noir-stained melodramas, which began when producer Jerry Wald cast her as Mildred Pierce. That 1945 film, which earned Crawford an Oscar, spurred a career revival that never strayed far from the inky tide of noir that was washing over Hollywood. Humoresque and possessed immediately followed Mildred, with Crawford giving Oscar-worthy performances in each. And despite all this momentum, Flamingo Road was not a sure bet. In the time since he'd directed Mildred Pierce, Michael Curtiz had left Warner Brothers to form his own production company. His heart was set on adapting another novel by James M. Cain, the author of Mildred Pierce. But that story, Serenade, was problematic, not only because of its content, but because another director, Vincent Sherman, also wanted to make it. And despite his desire to be independent of the studio where he'd long been the top director, Curtiz was still financially tied to the studio. His freedom came at the end of a very short leash. With debts mounting, Curtiz accepted Jerry Wald's offer of making Flamingo Road for Warners, but under the banner of Michael Curtiz Productions. It would, in fact, be the penultimate independent film made by Curtiz's short-lived production company. Flamingo Road began as a 1942 novel by Robert Wilder. He later turned it into a stage play in collaboration with his wife, Sally. Once Warner Brothers acquired the rights, Jerry Wald assigned two writers to produce separate screenplays, a fairly standard Jerry Wald maneuver. When no one could decide between the first adaptation by Edmund North and a revised draft by Richard Brooks, the decision fell to the real boss, Joan Crawford. She opted for North's version, but due to a contractual stipulation, he only received an additional dialogue credit. Novelist Robert Wilder got sole script credit. Also returning from Team Mildred was co-star Zachary Scott, the studio's resident cad, who'd reached new heights of smarminess as Mildred's two-timing husband, Monty Barragon. Although Scott plays a Southern lawman in Flamingo Road, he still bears a blue-blooded name, Fielding Carlisle. I mean, who'd believe Zachary Scott, who actually was from Texas, with a name like Pete Smith or Joe Johnson. Carlisle's boss, Sheriff Titus Semple, is played by Sidney Greenstreet, arguably the studio's most valuable character actor. He'd begun his film career only eight years earlier in The Maltese Falcon, and he'd since appeared in more than 20 films, mostly for Warner Brothers. Greenstreet was invariably the most entertaining aspect of any movie he was in, and Flamingo Road kept that streak intact. How a guy born in Sandwich, England, who'd made and lost a fortune as a tea grower in Ceylon, can be cast as the sheriff of a corrupt southern town? Well, don't ask. Just wallow in how wonderful it is to watch this guy in front of a camera. The film co-stars in his movie debut, Joan Crawford's personal discovery, David Bryan, and it features a fabulous array of the studio's most colorful character actors. You can say it's cheesy, you can say it's campy, and if you must, you can say it's miscast. What you can't say is that it's not entertaining. Here is Flamingo Road.